Hello. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back to Tuesday Talks. My name is Julia Day. My name is Megan Cosman, and we are both victim advocates at the North Star Advocacy Center. So this week, our guest on the show is actually another one of our advocates, um, part-time advocate, Abby Stoll. But before we bring Abby on, we'll talk about the personality test that we took this week, which Megan, do you want to start that out? Yeah, so this week we took what region of the country should you live in? <laughs> it's a BuzzFeed quiz. And um, so I took the quiz and I got that I should live in the northeast part of the country. And I, it, does, it didn't give any description as to why, like, you know, sometimes they say, oh, your personality is like this. So it didn't give any of that. It's just like you should, based on the answers to your questions, live in the northeast part of the country. Um, but I like it because that's a part of the country that I would really like to go visit. I've never, I have been to New York um, and I've been through. Pennsylvania to get to New York, but I've really not visited anywhere um, north of New York State. So um, I would really like to go. That's actually um, the next destination that I was wanting to go to. And I would really like to see it in the fall because fall is my favorite. And then you've got the coast up there too. So you have your ocean. And so I think that's pretty fitting. I like it. I'm happy with my result. What'd you get, Julia? I got, I should live in the Midwest, which is okay. <laughs> I really love out west. Um, I love like California and the desert. Um, yeah, and I would love, I haven't been to the Pacific Northwest. I would love to go there. Um, I think, yeah, just everything I've seen and heard about it, it seems beautiful. But yeah, Midwest, um, that's where we're at right now. <laughs> but I mean, it is beautiful out here. Like, I do think Missouri is a beautiful state and I mean, this is where all the little house on the prairie sites are. So, and I've hit, I think my mom and I have hit up three out of, I think, six or seven of the sites. So, you know, I've still got a few more sites to go. So Midwest isn't terrible. It's where all the corn comes from, all of our produce and all that fun stuff. And I like eating those things. So it's a good life to live. I like the corn life. Well, with that, we have, um, as Julia mentioned earlier, we have a fun guest. It's one of our coworkers. So she's another victim advocate here at North Star. And um, she also is going to tell us a little bit about what she does on the side, in addition to helping victims of domestic violence and sexual assault. So with that, we will go ahead and bring her in. Hey, Abby. Hi, guys. Welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on today. Thanks for having me, guys. Hi, Abby. Yeah, so Abby, do you want to tell the viewers um, who you are and what you do here at North Star? Sure. So I am a victim advocate at North Star. Um, we're coming up on me working there for one year in the next couple of months. Um, I work part time, so I split a full time position with Janine, as you guys have seen on earlier shows. And um, mostly what I do is just um, case management with clients. Um, helping them out, getting them the things they need to be able to leave the bad relationships or heal from the things that they've experienced. So Abby, can you tell us a little bit about your business on the side and what you do? Sure. So since I only work part-time, I have some stuff to fill my spare time, extra time, I guess you would say. So part of the time I stay home with my daughter Scarlett and when I'm not doing that, um, I have a small um, self-run business called ACS Designs, which is just my initials, um, and I do different things like make t-shirts, koozies, um, and all sorts of other stuff, so that's mostly what I do whenever I'm not at work. So we're happy to be displaying, and we've talked about your designs before. We've given a couple shout outs and former videos to your um, business on the side, so we're sporting your shirts again. And so, Thanks. viewers, you guys should have seen the In April We Wore Teal t-shirts that Julia and I are wearing, but then Abby's wearing the one that she made us back in October that we got to sport around all month. Yeah. And then Julia was just holding up a cup that also Abby made for us all that are personalized with our name. Yeah. Um, I also went and grabbed like a few other like little items I could just show you guys that I've made in the past. Like I really enjoy going to craft fairs and stuff. 
Um, but this is like a fun way for me to be able to make gifts for my friends, my coworkers, my family. Um, so I've just got like koozies is one thing that seems to be really popular. So there's some um, koozies that I've made. And then another thing that seems to be very popular that I've done um, in the past are these. And they are um, popsicle koozies. So they're for ice pops. Little kids um, wrap their popsicles in whatever they can find, I guess. Paper towels mostly to keep their hands warm. So this is just like a little koozie for kids for their popsicles. Um, they love them. And then I've done a lot of makeup bags. There's a couple examples of those. And then another thing, I make a lot of stuff for kids, I would say, um, is a tooth fairy bag. So instead of your kid just putting a stray tooth underneath their pillow for the tooth fairy to find um, and risk losing it in their bed or wherever else, um, when they lose their tooth, they can just put it in this little bag. It comes with a little glass jar that goes inside of it. Um, and you put you can put your tooth in it. So um, the front of it looks like this or has lots of different designs So this is a baseball one and then the other side says in this bag You'll find a teeny tiny tooth of mine. So I have lots of different ones for all different interests um, Different sports girly things boy things um, plenty of things that are gender neutral. So Here are just a few of the different designs that I have for those as well. So those are just some more examples of things that I um, sell on my page and at craft fairs or give away as gifts. I love those tooth bags. I did, I've not seen the tooth bags. Those are so cute. Yes, they are super handy. And then the nice thing about it is, is that there's plenty of room um, on other spots that if parents want it to be personalized for each kid, I can just add their name on their form real quick. Cool. Do you create those designs yourself? Do you come up with those? Yeah, so I uh, mostly just get the shape. I do not draw my own shapes. I um, purchase them or find them in a free file that I have access to with a membership that I've purchased. And then I have a software that I can put them all together on and figure and put it how I like it. And then I, for each color, that's a different layer that I have to cut and print and then layer it on. Awesome. How long does it take you to create these things or create shirts? Mostly designing them is the hardest part. So sometimes I get stumped and I look for Pinterest in inspiration um, and go off of come up with my own ideas by looking at other people's stuff. So that's usually the longest part. Um, something like this that I already have designed and saved to my computer and I can print up. Um, these probably take about 10 to 15 minutes each. Cool. Sure, it's probably about the same too, I guess. If people wanted to contact you, like for your business, because they're wanting to, like if they're having a bachelorette party or if they're having a baby shower and wanted to give away these gifts or purchase gifts for holidays or something, how would they get a hold of you? Um, I have a Facebook page and that's probably the best way to contact me through. It's on Facebook, obviously, and it's just labeled ACS Designs. Okay. I will post um, a link to that at the bottom of the page and then we'll post it at the end too. So then people sure. can have that if they want to contact um, ACS Designs to get some fun stuff. Yeah. Full disclosure on this cup. So you had said that, the, um, that it changes colors. Mm -hmm. So I thought that the letters change colors. And so I was like, oh, when I filled it up with um, just water, I think, um, but my letters didn't change colors. I'm like, oh, well, I'm just, that's still cool because it's pretty and it changes colors in the light because it's like the iridescent and then blue. Right. So I thought maybe that's what you meant. But then one day I put hot water or hot liquid in this and the cup changes. <laughs> yeah. So it's actually the cup, the ones that make it on Julia that change colors. And some of them change easier with hot or cold. But I've noticed like when I take mine outside, if I have a cold drink in it and it's one that's activated by the warm, then you can really see the difference when it's warm outside and cold inside or vice versa. Yeah. It was kind of a nice surprise because I'm like, whoa, the cup's changing color. So that was pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah, they're super cool cups. I have like four now. Kevin's cut me off. He says I cannot make myself anymore. <laughs> so Abby, just kind of switching gears to your work with advocacy again. Can you just share with us some things that you've learned um, while you've worked 
at North Star for this past year. And it can be as vague as just what you've learned about domestic violence or what you've learned about working in a small community, um, or even just learned about working with such a heavy um, and overwhelming job sometimes. Sure. So I think that um, whenever I figured out there was this job opportunity at North Star um, or previously the Children and Family Center when I joined, that I wasn't really for sure what to expect. Not originally a field that I was going to pick to go into, but I knew that I liked helping people. So I kind of went for it. And once I got the job, I was surprised by all the different stuff that I learned. Um, kind of the cycle of domestic violence and why people stay in the relationships that they do in and all the different statistics that come along with it. I was genuinely surprised. And I still think um, that a lot of people don't understand clearly. Um, and my family members, I was kind of, I would be so excited. I would be like, holy cow, guess what I learned today? And I would tell them and they would be like, oh, really? Or they'll ask me different questions about like, well, why don't, why don't these people just leave? And, and so it's, kind of cool for me to be able to relay the message to them about all the different things that I've learned and then open someone else's eyes to it and then maybe they'll relay that message to someone else so that's been really fun being able to tell different people about what I do and that all these people aren't just staying because they want to but there's actual reasons and statistics behind all of it yeah could you even just elaborate on like you know, as some of our viewers are watching this or are thinking about uh, people they've known in abusive relationships and they're like, well, why, why don't you just leave? Like, could you just kind of elaborate on why leaving isn't as easy as what it looks like? Sure. Um, so along with my family and friends, I also get the opportunity to go along most um, commonly with Linda to all the different area schools and teach kids. And this is one example that I really enjoy giving them because I feel like it's pretty um, easy to follow. So um, we could say somebody that's in a domestic violence relationship, why won't they just leave? Well, a lot of times they're people who are in families and they have children. So there's one barrier that they have. Um, if they leave, what are they going to do with their children? They feel like they're splitting up their family. And although we think that's a silly reason, that's a huge one when you're put in that situation. Um, another reason is, is that we all know domestic violence is all based on power and control. So if somebody wants to have power and control over you, they're gonna take away all the things that you control in your life. Many of the people that come to us don't have their own bank accounts, debit cards, credit cards, access to any money. Um, most of them don't have jobs because they've convinced that they don't need to have one. Um, so if they don't have a job, they don't really have anywhere to go. So a lot of times they're a single um, car family. So if you don't have a car and you don't have any money and you have all of these kids, where are you going to go? How are you going to leave this relationship? You, have, you feel like you have nothing. Um, you have no way to get away. We can call like the cops, I guess, but then that's really hard because then your kids are going to be worked up about what's going on. And it's just really hard because usually you're basically down to skin and bones and you have nothing but the clothes on your back and the belongings in your house. And then also just knowing that leaving doesn't always make things safer a lot of the time, which is a hard reality um, because it's something that we kind of overlook, you know, but like leaving doesn't always necessarily make it safer. Sometimes that escalates the violence just, and it goes back to what you've already said, which is because it's about power and control. So. Yeah, correct. So think about this person has done all this hard work to gain power and control over um, their wife or husband or significant other or partner, whatever you may have. If they have worked this hard to get all the power and control over you and take everything from you so that you have no other options and you find an option and you take it and you leave, can you imagine how upset they're going to get and how furious and mad they're going to be when they no longer have everything that they felt like they have worked for? They're usually pretty mad, and it usually ends up putting our clients in a little bit more danger than they were before, if not a lot. Yeah, I mean, I think the statistic is uh, survivors of domestic violence are at a 75% greater danger after they leave that domestic violence situation. It's exactly what you were saying, Abby, because of the power and control lost, and so someone who's enraged by that is going to do whatever it takes. And so that's where a lot of stalking comes to play, um, or honestly, even gun violence comes to play as well. Yeah, I totally agree. And it's definitely shown in my short time, um, not quite a year of working at um, North Star, it has truly shown that that is a very real statistic.
Um, so Abby, why did you decide to start your own business on the side and make shirts and fun cups and tooth fairy bags? Um, well, uh, a couple years ago, I um, saw somebody else using their Cricut machine and thought that I, that was really cool and saw all the things that they were making. And um, we had just gotten married and I was like, oh my gosh, if I had that, I could have done this for our own wedding and this for our wedding and this and this. So I begged my husband to get one and he got me one for Christmas that year. And I started making stuff just for ourselves, um, for our family friends. Um, I would give stuff away as wedding gifts because we're kind of that age where all of our friends are getting married and we have a million showers to go to. So I just started doing that. And then people were asking me like, hey, could you make me this? Hey, could you make me that? Um, and finally, I was getting busy enough with just simple requests from my friends and family from seeing other things that I'd made that I decided just to make a Facebook page um, because that would make it kind of easier to centralize it all to one place so they could contact me there. And I had a place I could keep my orders and things like that. So um, I decided to make a Facebook page and go off that. And, and ever since then, it's just kind of been growing a little bit here and there. And I started doing the craft shows and other things. So just mostly started out as fun and kind of grew into this. I think that's so fun, like especially because you're really creative and that's just fun that you can um, put that cre creativity into somewhere and just a cool hobby and then like it's nice to receive stuff like our shirts for example and just uh, the cup was just like an added awesome bonus so so yeah I mean good for you like that's that's really cool. Yeah and another thing you make um, are these hair bows which I'm wearing today one that you made and it's like a striped one and you had displayed like you had polka dot ones and floral ones and I just love these they are really cute and it's cool when you know someone who makes it so you are like supporting you know your friends your co-workers you know the small business part yeah so cool enough the machine that I have actually also I just recently learned um can cut fabric and like thin pieces of wood and other stuff like that so I was starting to add those to my inventory and I was getting ready for the busy craft fair season um, this spring and got to one craft show before COVID took over our lives. So I have quite the surplus stock of items right now, like all the tooth fairy bags and things I've just showed you guys. Um, so it's been a little bit harder to kind of put stuff out there and promote it to people. Um, but hopefully this time next year, I'll already have a bunch of work done for me. So it'll be a little easier. Well, I think that about wraps up our time for today. So before we sign off here, you took the quiz as well. So where the BuzzFeed quiz are you supposed to end up? Um, I'm supposed to end up in the north. Actually, I thought I said I thought I got northeast at first, but I actually am supposed to end up in the Pacific Northwest. So I thought I had Northeast at first, but I went back and looked at it again. Um, and it's the Pacific Northwest, which I do love that area. So that would be great, but I don't think I'll be moving there anytime soon. Well, Abby, thank you so much for being on our show. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously Megan and I love working with you. You're so fun, but it's also fun just to hear about your uh, work life outside of our advocacy work and all the things that you create. So thank you for sharing about all that with us. Yeah, we we love the stuff and like it's it's just really cool. So thank you for being on here today. Yeah, thanks for having me guys. I'm glad you like everything that I've made for you and that it's holding up well. So hopefully we'll be back in the office soon and maybe I'll have more goodies to surprise people with by the time we do that. Cool. All right. Thanks everybody. All right. See you guys later. Thank you. Bye. To order cool stuff or to see what else she has, contact Abby on her Facebook page at facebook.com slash ACS Designs 19.